Hey guys, it's Briar of Briar Chats and welcome back to my channel. If you like honest opinions, trash talking and the occasional dad joke, stick around because I think we will get along. In today's video, I wanted to talk about if I and if you guys think that Jaclyn Hill can save Jaclyn Cosmetics because she recently posted a video announcing that she is going to be closing her other two brands in hopes to pursue her dreams of making Jaclyn cosmetics successful again. If I call it Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, it's just by habit, but I believe it is ja just Jaclyn Cosmetics now. But yeah, so in today's video, I just wanted to talk about everything that she discussed in her video announcing she was going to close her other two brands. And if I think she can save Jaclyn Cosmetics, like can she save her brand? Can she actually make her dream a reality of having a successful makeup brand? Is it possible or is it too late? These are all of the discussions I wanted to have with you guys in this video today. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, stick around and let's get into it. What time is it? Disclaimer time. We got to do it guys. Shock horror. I am not a makeup brand owner and I am not a successful beauty YouTuber influencer. So these are just my silly goofy opinions and like no. I don't actually know, like I don't know the real answer, but these are my like thoughts and opinions on the situation. And I am not saying that I'm some sort of expert or as if I'm giving Jacqueline like the key to success or the magical piece of advice that will like save her brand. I mean, that'd be great and easy and like so fun and fresh. No, that's not the reality of the situation. We are just gonna be chatting about the video she posted and our thoughts and opinions. And that is all they are, thoughts and opinions. So yes, even though to me like the more important and exciting part of this video is talking about can she save her cosmetics brand and like the bigger picture and conversation around Jaclyn Hill. I do feel like it's important to discuss the main points and takeaways that I took away from the video that she uploaded announcing that she is going to close down her other two brands. So yes, let's get into the main points of her video, shall we? The first one being that the way she handled Handled the lipstick situation and the first launch of Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics is the biggest regret of her life and she says that like yes it was regretful what she did but her biggest regret in her life was how she handled the situation and everything that happened after what happened if that makes sense so if you for some reason don't know Jaclyn Hill I oh, was it 2019? I think it was 2019. She launched her brand Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, now Jaclyn Cosmetics, and her first launch was nude lipsticks and it was a disaster. Like people were finding foreign objects, fuzzies, like the lipsticks were a mess. Basically the brand was over before it even started, but definitely what made it worse was how she handled it because to this day, like we still don't really understand how it happened we don't understand why it happened like other people have spoken out on the situation and she kind of addressed the situation but I feel like there is this this like kind of cloud and mystery and questions that we still have all these years later as to what happened with the Jaclyn Hill nude lipsticks and she says that that is her biggest regret is how she handled that situation she then says that she wants to be more transparent and open in the time and in the process because she feels like she shares information after the fact and it's quite like surprising or jarring to people like they didn't see it coming so she's trying to share things whilst they're happening so we're not just like what's going on where did that come from so that is the idea and purpose she says behind this video if you can hear my dog snoring no, you can't. She then says that she basically let her team guide her. They were yes men. They just told her what she wanted to hear. And she basically just became a zombie that did the bare minimum, became reliant on alcohol. And as a result, she launched two brands to kind of prove that she can be successful and be a successful business owner. Enter the chat cozy, a comfy kind of lounge wear and lounge aesthetic brand. And Jacqueline Roxanne Jewelry. 
a jewelry brand. So these two brands she says she launched because of the failure of Jaclyn Cosmetics and because she felt so desperate that she needed to prove that she could have successful brands and equally everyone around her was launching so many brands she was like oh my god I gotta get in on that like I gotta do it too like me too please as opposed to being like mm, is that really what I want? And she felt that this was just really a result of letting other people tell her what to do not being responsible or in control of her own decision making not being not being responsible for her own decision making and kind of palming off her decision making to her team and to other people through this process she's realized that even though like she loves the product she doesn't want to be a ceo she doesn't want to be a kim kardashian a kim kardashian if you will where she just has a bajillion brands like that's not her passion she loves the product she's happy with the products but she's not excited about the products it's not what she wants her legacy to be she kind of was saying like she had this realization of being like I don't want to be the pajama sock girl I don't want to be the jewelry girl I want to be the makeup girl and that kind of realization made her realize that real guys just want down to Mars girls I wow anyway it made her realize that she did want to actually try and try with Jaclyn Cosmetics and not hide behind or take the safe route of having all of these other brands that she can kind of use and be successful at and she actually wants to give Jaclyn Cosmetics a go and her effort. She basically admits that she has been giving the bare minimum to Jaclyn Cosmetics. She hasn't been giving it what it deserves. She hasn't given Ulta the respect and time it deserves. Like she basically after Lipstick Gate gave up, coasted, did the bare minimum and just kind of played it safe because she was so like scared to put herself out there again. I will give her the fact that she is accepting that these were her decisions. She is saying like this was her decision. This was her choice. This was because of her actions. I feel like in the past she's kind of pushed the responsibility onto others. Whereas in this video she is saying I'm owning my shit. Like these were my decisions. This is because of what I decided to do. And this is because I haven't been putting in the effort that I should be. She also said that having three brands just made her feel like she was a salesman, which I feel like is pretty funny because not funny haha but funny in the sense of like she has always kind of been given a bit of flack for constantly promoting products and like having affiliate codes so it's really interesting that when it's her own brands she feels like her social media is just pushing other products which I'm not saying isn't valid but it's just interesting because I feel like even before her owning these three brands she's definitely been known as like a very sally and convincing beauty guru and like like beauty youtuber like it was her skill set I would say is like being able to sell you anything being able to like emotively explain to you why you need this product and she loves this product and it's the best product ever like I feel like that was a real skill and talent of hers so it's interesting that now that it's her three brands and her own products that she's made that she feels sales many she did say that she is scared to be vulnerable and it is scary and that's why she started doing Jacqueline's journey so that she can kind of slowly get back into sharing herself her struggles her life and what she is going through but she wants to just push herself to that next step of like creating content and sharing what she's going through sharing herself sharing in the way that she used to basically she then talks about the cozy situation again if you didn't know one of Jacqueline's brands cozy had a lot of controversy around it and she kind of starts by saying just because she hasn't talked about it publicly before doesn't mean she hasn't hasn't wanted to fix or address it and I feel like I wanted to just put a pin in that statement because I want to talk about it further but not right now like we'll, we'll don't worry we will we'll circle back to that one but she says that basically what happened is they were like thinking 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 of a brand name to basically encompass the loungewear aesthetic -y brand that she was trying oh my god fluff on my mouth she was basically said that they were really struggling to find a name to encompass this sort of loungewear aesthetic -y type of a brand. She was working with like a lawyer that was doing um what's the word trademarking which I think is interesting because it's like I wonder if that encompasses just American companies or global loungewear companies like I don't know that was just a question I thought I had because it's important it's important but basically when they came up with Cozy K-O-Z-E 
E, it was available and they went for it and she says where she messed up is that she didn't do her own research on social media, look and see if there was other companies or other brands that used that name that maybe didn't have a trademark or didn't come up in their own search. So basically they placed all of their orders, all the socks, all the gym jams. After that, it came to their attention that there was a Canadian brand by a girl named Kaylin and her brand was all things Coes, but it was spelt the exact same. It was said differently, but it was spelt the exact same. So obviously if you're gonna search it, it's gonna be a direct competitor. Now this is why, this is why I have the question of like what do they look up for the trademarks? Like if it was just American, would they have found that out anyway because she's a Canadian brand? Like I don't know, like they maybe would have. I wonder how that works, I guess is my bigger question. But that's like a sidebar. And basically it was just like Jojo, you're just a little too late. And like what are they gonna do? Like they had already made the orders. They reached out to Kaylin, but she never responded. And it sounds like in the way they reached out, they weren't gonna change the name. They like weren't gonna Kim Kardashian kimono to skims change the name I don't know what they were trying to do like what could they do if they're not changing the name like I don't that's one of the one thing I one of the things I didn't get I'm like if you're not gonna change the name are you just reaching her out to be like heads up warning we've got your name we've got it trademarked so there's nothing you can do was that it I don't know I didn't see the email all of that to say like she was trying to sort it out but there wasn't much they could do do. Then she basically talks about how she's just closing these brands down but that takes time and so it's going to be slowly sell everything and kind of do it at a pace where people can find new jobs that work for those brands etc etc and she kind of just finishes on saying like she doesn't know what's going to happen for Jacqueline Cosmetics but she wants to try and she wants to actually give it a go, own her shit, like actually try and not be too scared to fail. And that was kind of the Video. like that was her video in a nutshell surmised with a couple of my thoughts and opinions now I wanted to get to my bigger thoughts and opinions so I feel like where I want to start because that's kind of one of the last things we talked about is the cozy cos the cozy cos the cozy Kaylin cos situation because a lot of people reacting and watching that video were kind of just like so it really just felt like Kaylin and her brand all things cos were just collateral damage because Jacqueline literally came in took her name forced Kaylin's hand so that she had to close her brand and rebrand and now she's just closing her own brand so it's like all of that stress turmoil blame that Kaylin got because she didn't have the trademark so much bad stuff happened to her and for what for you to close your brand down and for her to be left with no brand no name no nothing it just kind of felt like Jacqueline with cozy steamrolled and just ran Kaylin's brand over and just like kept going and being like well it's done you know what are we gonna do it's kind of doesn't feel feel good enough? I don't know. I understand that there is only so much she could do. I think it just made people feel worse about that situation because it feels like it was all for nothing. It feels like all of that stress and all of that time and everything that happened to Kaylin was for Jacqueline to just decide to close her brand down and leave Kaylin with like less than nothing because now Kaylin, you know, she literally shut down her brand because of the name situation and it was just getting too much. The trademark situation, everyone was blaming Kaylin. It just felt like what was the point? What was the purpose? What was the reason? It just doesn't really feel like there was one and I think a lot of people are really struggling to accept that and struggling to accept that there wasn't more of an effort or an apology. There was not a I'm sorry Kaylin in the video. Like there wasn't a if she ever comes out with another brand like I will shout her out. I will like I want to support her. I want to make it right. There was none of that. It felt so unsatisfying and just unresolved I guess is the point of that ramblings. Is there was no resolution. There was no coming to some sort of compromise or acceptance or a way for Kaylin to be better off it's just like okay we're moving on to the next thing apparently so I think that that is just one thing that a lot of people are struggling with from that video is it just feels like 
Kaylin and her brand were collateral damage for Jacqueline to realize that what she's really passionate about is her cosmetics brand that she had all along. It was never necessary for her to do this to another person, to another brand, because she was never passionate about her brand cozy in the first place. And I think, again, going back to what I said before, like we're circling back. I swear if you, I swear you guys must be able to hear my dog snoring, but we're circling back to her saying like, don't assume that I'm not doing things behind the scene. But I feel like that's just such an impossible standard to set. I don't think creators should feel like they should need to share things they're not comfortable with. We as an audience cannot assume anything like we can't assume you're doing things about it good or bad and would there be no resolution from that situation it's like okay you were up at night upset about it but that didn't resolve the situation that didn't help Kaylin that didn't help anybody that just meant you were upset by it she says just because she's not sharing it just because we only see a little bit of her life doesn't mean that it's not happening but I think when you are a creator and when you have this relationship that you build and create with your audience if the information is important and relevant to the relationship you have with your audience and how people perceive you then you kind of probably do need to share that information. It's helpful to share that information. It's important to share that information. It's pretty necessary to share it if you want people to have a correct understanding of you as a business owner, as a content creator, and how you are dealing with situations, how you are coping with situations, and what you're doing to try and fix them. It's not a very fair or reasonable thing to ask of an audience to be like, just assume I'm doing the right thing behind the scenes. Because a, at this point with Jacqueline, we don't really have that common ground or that trust built in anymore, unfortunately. I don't think that that's a fair thing to assume and I don't think that that's a fair thing to ask your audience to assume is just like, just assume I'm perfect behind the scenes. Like, just assume I'm doing the right thing, okay? Like, don't worry guys, just assume it and it's true because it, it might be, but it might not be. And I think if you want people to know something, share it. Even if it's hard, even if you don't have all the answers, if you want them to know and you want them to understand and you want them to see you're trying to resolve something, you may have to just share it. That was kind of all I wanted to talk about the other stuff and the other brands. Like, to be honest, I feel like there's not much to say about her jewelry brand. But now I do want to talk more about her cosmetics brand, the lipstick situation, and like, can she save Jacqueline Cosmetics? Is Jacqueline Cosmetics still capable of being a successful brand? Is it still capable of being a brand with longevity? Is it a brand that deserves to be an altar? I think like she is taking the first step of saying she wants to own her shit. She wants to be accountable. She wants to actually like put herself out there and try like these are all good first steps but I don't think that that in itself is enough and I think there is still so so much that probably needs to be said and done. Like I said before, there is still so much mystery around the original lipstick launch. And as time has gone on, it's kind of only gotten worse because Jacqueline's never been explicitly accountable for that situation. She's never told us what's happened. And if anything, it's only gotten worse when Marlena, who was her ex-friend, came out and shared her story about her experience with Jacqueline and her previous friendship with Jacqueline because it only made her look worse and it only made this lipstick situation look worse because Marlena said you know she had helped her so much try and find labs try and find the right places to start a brand giving her giving her contacts giving her the information to start her own brand for Jacqueline to basically drop her for Linda from Morphe and Marlena even says and I mean it is a she said she said situation but Marlena even said like she told her that lab wasn't good like she had problems with that lab so it really didn't look good, but it definitely looked worse after Marlena shared her side of the story and shared her experience with Jacqueline and shared her experience with helping her set up her brand for it to ultimately fail because she dropped her and didn't take her warnings and just basically thought that everything would be okay when it was so far from that. And that's why, in my opinion, I feel like Jacqueline really just needs to tell the truth and not just say I'm owning my shit, not just say I regret 
the lipstick situation if you regret it and if you want to move forward i think she needs to share the truth i don't know if she's capable of it i don't know if she wants to do it i don't know if she will do it but i think that is what needs to happen for people to move forward because there are still so many questions there's so many things we still don't understand or know about the situation we kind of understand that yeah it was a bad lab like it maybe was a rush job she wasn't as involved as she should have been but these are a lot of speculation this is a lot of opinion this is a lot of people saying their side of the story but Jacqueline has never just sat down and said hey like this is what happened whether or not it makes me look good whether or not it's what I should have done whether or not it was the right choice this is what happened this is how lipstick gate happened and this is why it won't happen again because at this point it's just like how are we supposed to have faith in you if you've told us you've just been coasting doing the bare minimum and letting other people do the work and make the decisions for you how is that going to be a foundation to build a brand with a good representation and trust and i think trust comes from honesty even when it makes you look bad and i think if anything that will help people trust Jacqueline more i'm not saying it will fix everything i'm not saying it will be good enough for everyone but i think that that honesty and that elephant in the room especially about her brand there's only one way to fix that and that's to be honest and tell the truth and I know some people are probably like it happened so long ago like let it go Briar like seriously move on I don't think she can I don't think her brand can there will be people that will be like there's no good reason to share that but I think if she wants to own her shit if she wants to give this brand everything and rewrite her biggest regret and mistake of her life I think she needs to be honest I think she needs to handle it now how she wished she handled it back then I think she needs to share and be vulnerable even at the expense of her looking good even at the expense of sharing her mistakes because how are people to know that she's going to do anything different if she doesn't share why the mistakes happen and why they won't happen again that is why she needs to be honest because she says it's her biggest regret she said it's the one thing that she regrets the most is how she handled that situation so if she truly wants to give Jacqueline Cosmetics everything and give it the time give it the energy give it what she wants to I just think that she has to be honest she has to share the truth whether or not it makes her look good because I know it won't like we all know it won't but at least then we can start from a new page of honesty okay there are no secrets anymore there are no hidden mysteries anymore and you can finally move forward and you can show people and you can have told people why it won't happen again because I mean it's like in spite of all of that she still is an altar she still gets views she still is in the beauty community she still was able to launch two other successful brands so it's like she still has a chance there still is that possibility there but if she really wants to give it her all if she really wants to rewrite that mistake there's no other way to do it than be honest there's no other way than to just put all the cards on the table be honest say hey this is why it went wrong this is why I fucked up and this is why it won't happen again. Will it fix everything? No. Will she ever be able to have a clean slate? No. It's not as if there's anything that can be done that will make lipstick gate go away but she still has the chance to have a successful brand she still has the chance to give this brand her all so I think if she really wants to do it and she really means it let's start with being honest like let's start there because in spite of it all I feel like people still find Jacqueline really likable people have still enjoyed other products from her brand she is very good at communicating and selling and doing makeup and being an online creator like she still has has all those skills like she still is that person there still is the potential like I don't think it's over Brett Burrito like I don't think it's one of those situations but I do think if she really wants to give it her all if she really wants to rewrite that regret honesty is where she should start
it. And that is just my unprofessional opinion, guys. So please now let me know what you think in the comments down below, because I would love to know. Yeah, I would. Sorry I got a little bit serious at the end. Like, sometimes I get heated. This time I got serious. But it happens, you know? Like, sometimes, sometimes we're not quoting Friends or Kath and Kim. Like, like I don't think it's over Brett Burrito. Like, sometimes being a little bit serious. Sometimes I have a good point up here, well, at least for me, and I want to share it. So sometimes you got to get a little bit serious. But clearly I can't stay too serious for long so please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below i would love to know i would love to know if you guys have any additional thoughts anything you think i might miss like any other opinions i would love to know but yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you stayed till the end you are a real one don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you want to keep up with me between my uploads i'm on tiktok and instagram and i will link my vlog channel down down below but don't you worry guys because I'm not funny there either bye mm -hmm.